What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is a series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in Black Ops 4 multiplayer. In today's episode, we're going to be moving on to the Mozu Revolver, which is an extremely powerful secondary in this game. It has a damage profile of 62, 46, 32, 29. This means in core game modes, it's going to be a 3 to 6 shot kill, and in hardcore, it's always going to be a 1 shot kill, unless you're shooting through something, or unless the enemy has armor at really long ranges, or the third scenario is if the enemy has their health boosted by crash. Now the Mozu is semi-auto, and the rate of fire cap I was able to calculate is roughly 383 rounds per minute. This means that our statistical minimum time to kill without headshots and without attachments in core game modes is going to be 313 milliseconds in the three shot kill range, which is very fast and extremely competitive, but it does drop all the way off to 783 milliseconds in the six shot kill range, which is extremely slow and not very competitive at all. As for the Mozu against people that are using armor, it's actually quite good against them. It will only ever take you one extra shot to kill against an armor user, which is pretty good considering this is a secondary. As for our range values, as you can see here, our three shot kill range is quite solid. It extends out to approximately 18 meters. Then our four shot kill range extends out to 25 meters. After that, our five shot kill range will extend out to roughly 30 meters. And then finally, after that, it's going to be a six shot kill out to infinity. This is actually a really good range profile for a secondary weapon, and you can make that a whole lot better with the long barrel attachment, which will extend all of your range values by 66%, which is a pretty massive increase. Although I would say most of the time I don't feel like it's necessary, because this gun is really best suited to those close to mid-range situations anyways, and therefore most of the time I don't really bother with long barrel. As for hardcore, like I said earlier, this will be a one-shot kill in most normal situations, and therefore the long barrel attachment is completely useless in hardcore modes. As for headshots, we get a standard headshot multiplier of 1.1, which gives us a headshot damage profile of 68, 50, 35, 31. What this means is in some of those ranges, if you hit every bullet to the head, it will reduce the number of shots it takes to kill, but typically this isn't really all that practical, and therefore I would say if you're not using high caliber or the skull splitter operator mod, headshots are generally not worth going for. When you add the high caliber attachment though, it's a completely different story. We get a 1.75 times multiplier to our headshots, which is huge. This takes our headshot damage profile to a 108, 80, 56, 50. And with this, one single headshot will always be helping and reducing the number of shots to kill. And in situations like the standard four shot kill range, hitting two shots to the head in a row will reduce the number of shots it takes to kill by two. So now it's just a two shot kill. And this gives you an insanely fast time to kill. So if you don't have that skull splitter operator mod, don't worry, just use high caliber and you still get really consistent headshots and an extremely fast time to kill that most guns can't compete with. As for hipfire, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it with the Mozu. It is the second worst in the pistol category. It's just a little bit better than the RK7. And since you only have six rounds per cylinder, usually I'll try to avoid wasting them by hip firing, and I want to try and be as accurate as possible with this gun. Speaking of accuracy, the first aspect of that is going to be your idle sway. This has to do with your first shot accuracy. And as you can see here, the Mozu has very little idle sway, and it's relatively slow moving, although it does seem to be moving a little bit faster than the idle sway with the RK7 as well as the Strife. So if you did want to reduce this even more for those super precise shots at longer ranges, I would recommend using the stabilizer attachment, which as you can see, pretty much eliminates idle sway. As for recoil, as you can see here, there's definitely a little bit of vertical recoil if you're firing this as fast as possible, and also a little bit of horizontal recoil. It's definitely got a bit of randomness as it kicks upwards, but generally speaking, if you're keeping yourself at close to mid range and you're aiming center mass, you shouldn't have too much of an issue with recoil with this gun. Moving on to our cylinder capacity, this is six rounds with 24 total starting ammo. And with the Mozu, there's no option to use an extended mag or a hybrid mag type of attachment. This brings us to our reload add time, which is a little bit complex with the Mozu because without any attachments, you load each round individually within the cylinder. And the way this works is to load the first round, it will take you roughly 1.25 seconds. And then every round on top of that will take you about half of a second. So from empty, it will take you roughly 3.75 seconds to fully reload a Mozu. However, if you're just trying to top off a few rounds, it's not going to take quite as long. Now, if you don't like this reload time, which is quite slow, especially from empty, you can use the speed loader attachment, which will change your reload so you reload the entire cylinder all at once. And with this one, it doesn't matter if you're completely empty or if you've just fired one shot, it will take the exact same amount of time 
and this time is just 1.19 seconds, or it's essentially equal to the amount of time it would take you to reload just one round without any attachments on this gun. As for our aim down sight time, this is standard for the pistol category at 200 milliseconds, but we also have the option to use quick draw, which will reduce that down to 125 milliseconds. We see the exact same story with the sprint out time. Our standard sprint out time is normal for pistols at 200 milliseconds, and with gung ho, we can reduce that down to 125 milliseconds. This just leaves us with our movement speed, and we get a standard movement speed for pistols at 100%, and a standard aim down sights trace speed at 84%. However, we do have the ability to use stock on the Mozu, which will bring our aim down sight straight speed all the way up to 100%, which is ridiculously fast. So that pretty much covers it for all of the important stats for the Mozu. However, we have an amazing operator mod for this gun, which I'm sure most of you guys are very familiar with. This is the Skull Splitter. With this attachment, it will always be a one-shot headshot no matter what. For obvious reasons, this is an extremely powerful attachment to use on the Mozu because you get the handling and mobility of a pistol, you get the versatility of having a decent fire rate on a semi-auto, while also getting the one-shot kill potential that sniper rifles have. All it requires in return is precision. If you've got a solid shot and you're able to hit these headshots consistently, you will be pretty much completely untouchable in-game because your time to kill is essentially zero. And with that, that brings us into the recommended attachment section before we get into some excellent class setups that I have with the Mozu. So first up, for optical attachments, we do have one option, and this is the compact scope. And with this, it is a variable zoom scope, so you can have it on a 1.5 setting or a 4x setting. And for a lot of people, they really enjoy using this compact scope, especially if they're using Skull Splitter, because they get that added precision while aiming for the head at those longer ranges. For me, honestly, I can take it or leave it. I like the iron sights on the Mozu, and I generally have no issue with that. But sometimes I've got that extra class point available, so I'll throw on this compact scope. As for the other attachments, a lot of them are very, very good to use on this. High Caliber, like I said, if you're not using the Skull Splitter attachment, I would definitely recommend High Caliber because headshots will still be extremely powerful for you and you can get an amazing time to kill. The stock attachment can also be good. I feel like it's unnecessary because your aim down sight straight speed is already very fast without it, but if you want to get extreme with it, you can definitely throw stock on there. Long Barrel can be a very solid attachment in core modes because it increases all of your ranges by 66%. But like I said earlier, I don't feel like it's necessary by any means. I think the ranges are already solid, and if you just keep yourself at those close to mid ranges, you normally won't have too many problems with the ranges. And something big I wanted to point out with Long Barrel 2, I did some tests when the game first came out, and Long Barrel 2, which is supposed to increase your muzzle velocity, did absolutely nothing. Like, literally nothing at all. I tested frame by frame both with and without Long Barrel 2, and the bullet would always register on the exact same frame. However... While making this gun guide, I tested this again, and Long Barrel 2 seems to be working quite effectively now. Your shot will now register in roughly half the number of frames, which at extremely long ranges you'll definitely be able to notice. However, in the average situation, the average gunfight, this will be a negligible impact. So while Long Barrel 2 doesn't appear to be completely useless anymore like it appeared to be when the game first launched, I still don't feel like it's really a worthwhile attachment. Yes, at really long ranges, especially when the enemy is moving perpendicular to you, Long Barrel 2 will definitely help. However, most of the time with this gun, you're keeping yourself at close to mid ranges, and in those situations, you will literally never notice a difference between having Long Barrel 2 and not having Long Barrel 2 equipped. This brings us to the speed loader attachment, which is an amazing choice on this gun. I highly recommend this, especially if you're using it as your primary weapon. Quick draw is completely unnecessary. I feel like the aim down sight time is already very, very solid, so I'd never use quick draw on this gun. And this just leaves us with stabilizer, which, if you remember from the idle sway tests, it's definitely not necessary, but it is nice to have, especially if you're using the skull splitter and trying to pick people off at somewhat longer ranges. So finally, this leaves us with a couple great example classes I have for you guys. The first one here is really designed for core modes, and this is using that skull splitter attachment. And with this, we're using the Speed Loader, the Stabilizer, as well as, obviously, Skull Splitter. We've got Stim Shot for our gear, so we can get back in the fight immediately after taking damage. Our equipment is going to be Special Issue. Then, for perks, we've got Scavenger, because you burn through those 24 rounds pretty quickly with this gun. Gung Ho, so we can sprint out pretty much immediately, especially if we break our sprint by aiming down sights. And then, finally, Dead Silence, which is just one of my crutches in this game, because I hate hearing my own footsteps, and I hate being sound whored by others. As long as you're aiming for the head, this class setup is incredible, and this will compete very, very well with the primary weapons in this game, and I find it really fun and rewarding to use as well. 
Now, of course, keep in mind, if you don't have Skull Splitter unlocked yet, maybe you're still ranking up the gun, you can absolutely substitute that for high caliber, and then you can spend that extra point on something else if you'd like, like a compact scope. But if I had to choose in core game modes, this is how I would be running the Mozu. As for hardcore modes, I've got an excellent class setup for you here. With this, we're using the compact scope so we can treat this kind of like a sniper rifle, but also something that's really viable and effective up close. Once again, we've got that speed loader attachment, which is pretty much necessary, I feel, if you're using this as your primary weapon. And once again, we've also got stabilizer. Our gear is going to be body armor, so we can often soak up a bullet within hardcore, which will allow us to win a few more gunfights. Our equipment is, once again, special issue. Perks are going to be Scavenger, Gung-Ho, Dead Silence, as well as Team Link. And I've said this a lot before in previous episodes of Gun Guides, Team Link is extremely powerful in hardcore modes. With this, you're going to have a one-shot kill at all ranges. It's going to act like a sniper as well as a pistol up close, and this gun is very, very dominant in hardcore modes. And with that, that's going to wrap up today's Gun Guide on the Mozu. As always, I'd like to know in the comments section below, what do you guys think of this gun? Do you think the Mozu is really powerful, really weak, somewhere in between? Personally, I absolutely love this gun. It is probably my favorite secondary, mainly because that Skull Splitter attachment is so much fun to use. But even if I'm just using it as a secondary weapon to finish off kills when I'm mainly using my primary weapon, I really like the Mozu for that as well. It's got a great time to kill, even without attachments at all. And therefore, I definitely give the Mozu two thumbs up. If you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, we've covered all of the guns now except for the shotguns as well as the Cap 45, which I will be covering the Cap 45 next. I will leave a link to the playlist down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.